Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can emotional expressions be used to differentiate borderline personality disorder from major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder? To help answer this question about emotional expressions in these disorders, I'm using an article published by Namna and colleagues in 2018. I'll put the reference to that article in the description for this video. So let's first talk about borderline personality disorder, then I'll talk about how it has some similarities with major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder, and then we'll look at this relationship between the disorders in terms of emotional expressions. So when we consider borderline personality disorder, we see that there are several symptoms associated with it. Frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, an intense, unstable relationship style. This is an idealization devaluation cycle that we see with borderline personality disorder. We see identity disturbance, impulsivity, suicidal behavior, gestures, threats, ideation. We see affective instability, chronic feelings of emptiness, intense, inappropriate anger, and paranoid ideation. Now when we look at major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder, I'm not gonna go through all of the symptom criteria for these disorders, but there are some similarities we see with borderline personality disorder. Some of these areas are quite similar and other symptom criteria line up to some degree. For example, with depression, we see recurrent thoughts of death. This could align with the suicidal ideation we see with borderline personality disorder. We also see feelings of worthlessness with depression, and it wouldn't be surprising to see that with borderline personality disorder as well. And specifically with the depressed mood portion of depression, one of the emotions associated with that is a feeling of emptiness. And again, we see this with borderline personality disorder. Now, when we consider bipolar disorder, of course, we're adding in mania. So there's the major depressive episode and then a manic episode. Now, of course, it's important to remember with bipolar disorder, technically, a major depressive episode isn't required. We just see that most of the time. That's with bipolar 1 disorder. Of course, with bipolar 2 disorder, a major depressive episode would be required. But either way, looking at the mania, or sometimes the hypomania, we see with bipolar disorder, we see elevated, expansive, or irritable mood. And some of the indicators of this mood, like engaging in activities that have a high probability of painful consequences, would align somewhat with borderline personality disorder. We also know that borderline personality disorder has high co-occurrence with major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder, depending on what research you look at. The co-occurrence rate is anywhere from 4% on the low end to 48% on the high end. So we do believe, in general, there is quite a bit of co-occurrence, even though we see a lot of variability in the co-occurrence figures in the research. So with all this in mind, we know that it is difficult sometimes to differentiate borderline personality disorder from major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder, and this specific study is looking at the everyday emotions experienced by individuals who have these disorders and seeing if there's some differences there that can help us in differentiating the disorders. Now we know from the research literature that both borderline personality disorder and bipolar disorder are characterized by heightened reactivity and instability of negative emotions. So it makes sense to look at emotions as a place to try to differentiate these disorders. So this study was really looking at the variability of emotions. So when we think about the term variability and we think about people's emotional reactions, high variability would mean that in any particular sample, we'd see a lot of different scores. We'd see a number of low scores, some in the middle, and a number of high scores. Low variability would mean that all the emotional expressions in the sample were fairly similar. So we'd see a lot of numbers grouped together. So it's believed here with borderline personality disorder and depression and bipolar disorder that there is a lot of variability in the emotions, and this study looked to measure variability in three different ways. One way is emotional instability, and this is abrupt variability in an emotional state. The next is emotional reactivity. This is really a specific type of emotional instability, one that's linked to a specific psychosocial event. So with the emotional reactivity, we still have that abrupt variability in emotional state, but something happened to cause it. Emotional reactivity presumes a cause. And the last construct would be emotional inertia. And this is really the persistence 
of an emotional expression. So we could think about this construct as having little or no variability. So the emotion stays the same over time. Sometimes in clinical work, this is referred to as getting stuck, when we see the same emotion persist for a long time and somebody has difficulty moving out of that emotional state. So these three ways of looking at variability of emotion, emotional instability, emotional reactivity, and emotional inertia, were looked at across a number of emotions. And they were characterized as irritable, angry, guilty, ashamed, happy, and excited. So they wanted to see if there was any difference with the variability of emotion for these six emotions across borderline personality disorder, major depressive disorder, and bipolar disorder. So what were the results from this study? Well, not surprisingly, they found that for borderline personality disorder, if you looked at the daily lives of the individuals in that participant group, individuals who were diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, you saw heightened instability and interpersonal reactivity of negative emotions. So again, we've seen this in other studies, and this study really had the same finding in that regard. Some other characteristics that stood out specific to borderline personality disorder would be the dynamics surrounding guilt and shame. They found increased instability, increased interpersonal reactivity, and increased inertia around guilt and shame specifically. This variability of emotion around guilt and shame seems to be somewhat specific to borderline personality disorder. It was not explained by major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder. The study also found that anger instability and irritability instability, as well as irritability inertia, appear to be transdiagnostic. This means that they don't help differentiate these disorders. We see these patterns across all three of the disorders. So how can these results be applied in mental health treatment? Can these results help us differentiate these disorders? Well, what we learn here from these findings would be that we need to ask about emotional responses to difficulties, particularly around the areas of guilt and shame. We also see we need to ask about severity and frequency of persistent shame. And with these different questions, we want to see how problematic these are in individuals' lives. Can we identify any patterns around these areas? It's important to recognize, of course, that looking at everyday emotions is just one way to help differentiate these disorders. It's not a substitute for a thorough appraisal, but rather these are questions that can be considered to add on to an appraisal, to make the appraisal more targeted for differentiating borderline personality disorder, major depressive disorder, and bipolar disorder. I hope you found this description of these disorders and everyday emotions to be interesting. Thanks for watching.